good to go. Front front show. Hello, hello, we're good to go. I'm with the front part show. Here's Donnie. Live from St. Mary's Cathol Park by the seat of our pants productions is again proud to present the front part show starring John Stevens. Unfortunately, I didn't quite make it to the final. Wimbledon. I've never heard of Wimbledon, Ontario. <laughs> Don, where's that? Some down, somewhere down near Sarnia it's or something? Just, it's just over the pond. Oh, okay, yeah, just over yeah, the pond. Right. Okay, Pond Mills. Okay, yeah. but I hey, got it. When it comes to tennis, you yeah. and I are both missing out tonight, right? We are. We're yeah. sacrificing this our is, tennis career. This is our usual tennis nights down at the St. Mary's Tennis Courts. And it's also Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday nights at 7. Anyone is wants to play can drop in it's uh, all social tennis as we say we are not competitive but and if you still want to learn tennis drop in Thursday at 615 and we'll show you a thing or two right Dave right, right. Woo okay very good okay well uh, Frank just play a bit of music while we get into our first interview okay <laughs> first appeared on the front porch show six years ago. Can you believe that? And listening to her mother, Summer, serenade her. Well, that was then. What's going on, puppy? Okay, there we go. She, she is now an actress appearing in Under the Banner of Heaven, which was in 2022, and In the Dark in 2019. So please welcome Alba Evora Wyler. Yes! So how old are you, by the way? I did I forgot to put that in, to let you know. How old are you? Um, I'm nine. Nine years old. Okay. So when did your acting career start? Um, my mom has an agent, and my and I loved it, so I started acting. Okay, and so what was the first thing you acted in? Um, in the Dark, and I played Angel, and she was playing an angel in the church, and I had to say one line, and my line was, my candle went out. Okay, my candle went out, okay. So you were an actual angel, or you were somebody whose name was Angel, or yeah. both? Both. Both, fantastic. Now, how did this turn into being in the cast of Banner of Heaven? Um, I got 
extra, and that's like an extra union. Mm -hmm. and so you're a union yeah. member? Yeah. Wow. And that led to bigger roles. Yeah. And uh, so how, how, how did you audition for this? Did they just saw you and said, we want her, or did you have to audition? Um, I had to audition. Mm -hmm. And that, where was that now? Where did you audition? Um, I auditioned in my house, actually. In your house, okay, it was yeah. by Zoom. Yeah. Ah, fantastic. Okay, so uh, where was the film shot then? Um, it was shot in Calgary, Alberta. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of tiring to go back and forth so many times. About how many times do you think you went back and forth? 16 times. Wow. And so what, what were the frequency? You'd go and then come back and then go and come back like yeah. week after week after week? Yeah. Really? Well, wow, that's a lot of, that is luck. Do you have air miles, I hope? Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you do, uh, I'd like to play you really between Annie and Jimmy. Uh, so how did this affect your life? Um, it was kind of, it was hard. But there were like a lot of good things that happened. Like at the end, me and my mom went to BAM. Yeah. And we also went to the spa. And it was really fun. <laughs> So, uh, what was your role in, in Banner of Heaven then? Um, in Under the Banner of Heaven, Under I played the banner, yeah. Caroline Kylie, and she is really, really, like, funny and cheeky. And my dad specifically said in the movie not to, um, like, ask for things that you want on your birthday. So I said I want an easy bake oven and a super one for Christmas, but didn't get. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> so what was your character like? You said you, she was funny, right? Yeah. And Anything she else? Cheeky. She was cheeky and like okay. a troublemaker. Is this normal for you? No. No. <laughs> okay. What did you have to do in your role to portray your character then? For example, did you have to get angry? Did you have to get afraid? Um, I had to be, I had to like act younger. Yeah. And it was kind of hard because I'm pretty mature. So what are some of the things you had to do to act younger? Um... I have to like change my voice a little bit. Can you do that for me now? I kind of forget how to okay. do it. Okay, fair enough. No, no problem. Okay, but was it a scary, is it a scary film? What's the film about? Um, it's not a kid's show. Okay. Um, but it was about a murder in the 80s. Uh-huh. But definitely like don't watch it with your kids if you have kids. Right, okay. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Tell us what it was like to participate in the production then. It was really fun. Yeah. I had so much fun. Like, honestly, um, the people on set treated the kids better than the adults. Mm -hmm. So what, were, what what made it so fun? Um, I just like, really liked everybody who was on the set and stuff, like my sister and my dad and my mom. On the now, set. you're talking about not your real sister. No. You're talking about your sister on the set. Yeah. Yeah. So do you think you'll see some of these people again? I hope so. Possibly. Possibly. Now you 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 had a uh, pretty cool dad in, in in Under the Banner of Heaven. Tell us about your cool dad. Um, he is Andrew Garfield, and he played Spider Man in the Amazing Spider Man movie. Mm -hmm. And so, how did you get along? Did you get a chance to talk to him a lot? Oh yeah, he was like super friendly and everything. Right. Every time we came on set, um. I would go, hi, dad, and he would go, hi, daughter. <laughs> so what is your biggest memory that you can take away from all of this? Um, so we were, like, at a police station in one of the scenes, and I was handing out cupcakes with my sister, and every time, like, I gave this one police officer a cupcake, he would always get icing on his face. So I'd always have to grab him a napkin and say, here's a napkin for your troubles, good sir. Okay, fantastic. What about uh, what what about in the future? Uh, do you have anything lined up for the future? Um, I was just auditioned for a movie called, I mean, a TV show called Fargo. Right. And I was also auditioned for a show called Working Mums. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. So uh, we'll be putting, will you be putting in your resume that you uh, appeared on the front porch show? Possibly. Possibly. Okay. Okay. Uh, that was okay. <laughs> Possibly. So, so when and where can people see you in Under the Banner of Heaven? Um, Disney Plus and Hulu.
Disney Plus and Hulu. Yeah. And when is this going to be starting, or has it started already? It's already started. Okay, because I see I don't get Disney Plus and Hulu. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so uh, Disney Plus and Hulu, uh, thanks for coming in. We wish you all the best in the future, Alba. Alba Evora, why do you do the Evora? What I, I just always knew you as Alba. That's my middle name. Okay. Now, Alba, by the way, if you don't know Portuguese, it means Don. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, Don. Does Evora mean anything in Portuguese? I'm not sure. Does Portuguese people, does Evora mean anything? It's a place. It's a place. It's a place. Okay, there we go. So, Don in a certain place. Beautiful. Thank you for coming in. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Community news, folks. Woo. Brought to you again by the St. Mary's Independent. And uh, my phone, if it uh, likes my password. There we go. You are invited to come and play shuffleboard at the Friendship Center Mondays at 1 p.m. or at the Lynn Sportsplex on Thursday at 9.30 a.m. Drop in. It's free for Friendship Center members and only a tuning for non-members. Donations of blood are needed in St. Mary's. You can book a donation at blood.ca and the bank will be held at the PRC tomorrow, July 11th from 2 to 7. I'll be there. Will you be there? Absolutely. Absolutely. Great. Well, we'll, we'll bleed together. I don't know they want some of my blood, though. You know, somebody's going to wake up in the morning with my blood and say, Hangover? Hello, world! <laughs> Here I am! Cut. Summerfest is fast approaching on July 23rd. Tickets are currently for sale at Bob Noxious and the uh, Rad Gib All-Star Band who are taking the stage in support of Cindy's Law. You know what Cindy's Law is? Yes. Excellent. Good. Cindy's Law is an initiative to set into motion that every vehicle on the road nationwide is equipped with a fire extinguisher in order to prevent tragedies such as that of Cindy Devine. That's such a great idea, yeah. don't you think? Yeah, I'd certainly appreciate it if I ever got into an accident. And finally, but not least, the Chris, not the, Chris Campbell is catering a community barbecue. Oh, we're going to love that brand. Chris, oh, I'm I there for ribs. 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 All those ribs, oh, yeah. Oh I hope he's doing ribs. Oh. July 19th from 4 to 6 at the United Church, Please bring a donation of non-perishable foods for the Salvation Army Food Bank. And that is Community Calendar. We also want to remind you that St. Mary's Talent starts next week. So this is your opportunity, St. Mary's, to come and show off your talents. Non-musical, I'm sorry, Frank. You already got your thing with music. So we're looking for people who do non-musical acts, you know, such as magic, Maybe a dog trick, pet tricks. Jokes. If you're an artist, maybe you can do a caricature of John or Frank or somebody uh, uh, in Don, five minutes. Don. Uh, maybe. I don't know. I'm, uh, my face is a little tough. you got to put on a, a little weight before they do. Oh, well, you have to catch up to you. <laughs> uh, maybe you're a gymnast or you can show off some dance moves. Whatever Stop you me. got, come and talk to me or send me an email, don.van.galen at gmail.com, and I will let you know when you can be on. Can you say that again? Show. Can you say that again? Come on, without looking at don it. don.van.galen at gmail.com. Oh, all right. Perfect. What a guy. Okay. Uh, she's been active in the community in so many ways in her, her long time. Her vers versatility has risen to the occasion and it's been legendary. A legend in our community. She is now the chair of the St. Mary's Healthcare Foundation, Cindy Billier. Is it Billier, right? That's Correct. I always. Uh, so, first, I have to give full disclosure. I'm a board member on the foundation. And regardless, regardless, there's a lot to learn about the foundation. So uh, we're going to get some, some really, really tough questions to you, Cindy, today. What's your favorite color? Blue. Blue. Okay, there we go. That's it. Tough questions are over. Okay. Uh, first, uh, when did the Healthcare Foundation start and why? I actually had to get do some research on this because it's before my time, but uh, early 1990s. Um, and it started because 
uh, cutbacks in the government, and it was during the uh, procurement of the alliance, which is the healthcare alliance. In, uh, we have problems with flies, <laughs> don't we? And and so all the um, foundation or er, uh, towns, which is Seaforth, Clinton, Stratford, and St. Mary's, all formed their own foundations um, due to shortfalls again in the government, just cutting back and equipment and, and items still needed to be to be purchased and that's how foundations support the hospital. So so without the foundation without the hospital we would weaken quite a bit. Absolutely. Right. Uh, how has it evolved through the years? Um again long before my time, but um, years ago it was it was a group of, of people and they considered the foundation and, and they 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 created money and they raised money and uh, since then they've we've become a little more I don't know whether it's business like but we have um, bylaws and procedures and charters uh, we have terms we can't stay on the foundation too long so right. we've involved in that way where we have some rules that we have to follow mm -hmm. now uh, I know that st. Mary's people are really fiercely proud of that hospital mm -hmm. because I in fact, I was here once when uh, they were trying to shut down the emergency at night, and, uh, uh, and I know I'd heard about the other battle before we arrived, and how they were basically trying to shut down the hospital, and, and our community just went crazy. They said no. They said no, it's not going to happen. And then uh, we're glad we have people like the foundation. Uh, now, how is it connected to the Memorial Hospital? Is it it's independent, or is it... We are we are the fundraisers for the hospital. So if the hospital needs something, um, it's the foundation that raises the money for those needs. Like the wellness center was 100% built with well, with foundation money. So the hospital basically runs the hospital, and the the foundation basically provides all the the wish All list the things. equipment, all the beds, all the wheelchairs, all the ultrasound machines. Yeah. That's quite an undertaking. It is huge. It is huge. Now, there's a major product project going on right now. Tell us about it. Very excited about this project. Both wings in the hospital, um, the east wing and the west wing, will be totally renovated starting uh, hopefully January 2023. It has been delayed due to COVID, etc., as everything else in this world has. Um, but starting in January, the east wing will be shut down. And... Um, Renovations will start, and we are putting in a new ventilation system. This hospital was built right after the war, so there are still radiators in the hospital. They will all be removed. There's no wheelchair-accessible washrooms in the hospital for staff to get wheelchairs into the washrooms. Those will be all come out. We will have new headboards put in, all new LED lighting. Uh, the sprinkler system is being replaced. Um, a lot of upgrades happening, and we will be a very modern um, hospital when this is over. So we're very excited about that for the staff, for our patients, for the families, for the future of the hospital. And what, what's the uh, what's the target for? Target the, the foundation. The total cost of the project is approximately six million dollars. It went to tender this week, yay! And uh, our goal, we had already committed. 1.25 million after the um, Someone I Know campaign, so there was that money that was going to go towards refreshing the rooms, and the HPHA said, why would we do that when this hospital needs so much more? So, we kept that, those funds back, ready for this project, so we have to raise three million dollars for this project, the one half of the six million dollars, and we are halfway there, so Wonderful. I'm very... 1.45 right now. And, and what are some of the things you do to, to raise the money? We have our, our events that we always have, as you well know, we just had a gala at uh, the end of May, which was extremely successful. It's so nice for the community to get together. Had a lot of fun. Um, we have a golf tournament coming up in August. We always do, we, we, in the past we've done River Road Run again, but due to COVID that hasn't happened for the last couple of years. Um, we have our Be an Angel campaign that we do at Christmas time every year for the end of the year. Um, funds go, and the, all these funds will go towards this campaign coming up. Yeah. Uh, what have I forgotten? The golf tournament. Yeah. 
you, you brought in a little gadget from one of them. Yes. Which uh, this, oh. this came from. Uh, uh, how, where do we? Go? How was that one funded? What is it? This is a telemetry pack. We purchased. Hold it up just so. There we go. We per we purchased three of these, um, and this money came from the Smiley Cookie campaign, which the community supports. We raised over fourteen thousand dollars last September in one week at Tim Hortons for from buying cookies, and we purchased three of these and. Um, I don't know if any of you have ever used a blanket warmer in a hospital, but when you're in shock and you are not well and you need to be warm, and they pull those warm blankets out, and that also was purchased, and it should be arriving this month in the for the emergency department in the hospital. So we purchased three of these and a blanket warmer with the Smiley Cookie money um, from last September. So we're really looking forward. Again, we've been we've been offered the um, op offered um, from Tim Hortons to, to run it again this year, and we're very pleased with that. Right. Okay, and during the pandemic, uh, what what role did the foundation play then? We supplied, we often try to lift spirits um, within the hospital. As we all know, it's been tough. And we've, um, we, we do dinners. Um, we sometimes just bring up dessert for the staff at the hospital. Um, we just try to keep their their spirits high and, and they are very grateful for, for all of that. Right. So looking to the future, what challenges do you see? Right now in this moment, I, I feel the challenges will be staffing. I, 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 as we all hear on the news, um, recruitment of nurses, um, specialty nurses, we just don't move nurses from the floor to the ED. Um, as we all know that the ED has been closed ED, emergency, emergency department. department, sorry, and, and uh, as we all know, Clinton and Seaforth are, are there right now, I think, this weekend. So it's hard to move staff around. It is very specialty staff that works in the emergency department. So, yeah, you just don't move nurses around. So uh, if people want to contribute to the mm -hmm. foundation, what, what do they do? How can they become involved? You can call our office, and April or Bernice will answer the phone. They're there four days a week. Um, and you can go online on our website and donate there also. So yeah. And they can buy 50 50. And you can buy 50 50. Yeah. That's one other thing we forgot to mention. Our 50 50 has been extremely fun. Uh, yeah, um, it's so fun to, to see local people win it. And uh, yeah. Am I allowed to win? Because I haven't yet. No, we are not allowed to. Oh, that was, so I'm buying a you ticket. You and I can't useless. buy tickets. So oh, so thank you. Well, I'll buy them just the same. That doesn't make much So, difference. yeah, please I support the 50 50. It's a huge thing for us, and, and it's a lot of fun to see local pin people win. Yeah. I think it's safe to say that our hospital is one of the sacred things in St. Mary's. And thank you, Cindy, for coming into the Front Porch Show and enlightening us with your information. Thanks for asking me, John. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs>
What is a, a mannequin over there of a... Who, who can shout out who that is? The uh, mannequin's maybe the wrong word. The big cardboard thing. Cardboard cutout. The cardboard cutout. Thank you. Hold who it, is that? Hold it, hold it. The big thing. Larry Walker. Thank you very much. Okay. Well, the other famous person we have here is Scott Crawford. And everybody in town knows who Scott is. But for those who are from out of town, uh, he is the executive director of the Canadian Baseball Hall of Fame. So welcome once again to the Front Court Show, Scott Crawford. Woo! Thanks, John, for having me. Look, I brought my little friend here, Jerry Howard. If you guys recognize him, the old Blue Jay broadcaster. Yeah. He reminds me a lot of you, John. He's sitting in a chair with a microphone. He's good looking, then. Very. Very. So we're going to sit him on the piano here. Okay, fantastic. All right. He can enjoy the rest of the show. Okay, okay. Here we go. First question. Okay, first, it's been a tough two years, Scott. Now take us down the timeline of how, what the Hall of Fame has been through in the last two years. Here we go. Well, we announced our inductees in February 2020, and we inducted them in June of 2022. So that should tell you what we did the last couple of years for our ceremony. The museum was basically closed, the ball fields were closed, kids couldn't play ball, and, and it was pretty uh, pretty sad to see, especially the kids not playing ball outside. Yeah. Okay, so ultimately, what got you through the two years? Good thing we practiced this, John. That's for sure. Um, basically just knowing that the uh, that we will get through this obviously we will get open we're not the only ones that are closed we're like all the other indoor uh, museums and attractions in the province uh, we knew we'd have induction we knew we had great support still and uh, and we were just looking forward to the days we could open again and and here we are we're having a great 2022 great okay so uh, what is the hall, hall of fame done in the area of get making new business relationships we've had a couple great people come on board lately uh, in the last year or so. TD Bank came on board. We uh, got connections with their head office and, and they're really on board. They're one of our great sponsors now. And, and Leftfield Brewery, the brewery out of Toronto, that's where we hold our opening event now in, for induction weekend. And, and Leftfield's come on, they've made beers about our inductees and about the Hall of Fame and, and they donate proceeds from every beer sold. So we're, we're pretty excited about those two new ones. Now, uh, I hear your venue is uh, it's not just a Hall of Fame, the building's quite beautiful, it's rather new, and it's being used for other types of functions. Tell me about those. Yeah, part of the expansion in 2019 was to uh, do an event space. Um, it's big enough to hold about 55 people, and uh, it's a licensed event space, and we've had uh, Rotary Club events, golf club events. I just met with a local real estate company who's going to host a big open house in October at the Hall of Fame. and. And uh, we're, we're there to rent. It's a, it's a fun, unique, small space that anybody can call me or come down to the museum and, and check it out. Okay. Now tell us about this, this induction this year, because it was pretty special. It sure was. Again, we've been waiting since 2020 to have it. So uh, we inducted four great individuals. Justin Morneau, one of the greatest Canadian baseball players ever from British Columbia. Jeff Francis, who's also from British Columbia, but lives just down in Masonville Mall near London, or in London, um, so he's nice and close. Uh, Pedro Martinez was the guy who was supposed to come in 2018, but got sick, so he finally came. And, uh, and then Dwayne Ward, the famous Blue Jay pitcher we all know, uh, finally got on stage. And four great people, their speeches were just amazing, and, uh, and they were great with the fans. Okay, now, there's some exciting news about regarding Little League. Uh, tell us about that, Scott. Yeah, part of our process of the Hall of Fame over the last couple of years has also been spreading our, our board of directors across the country. I mean, we're based in Southern Ontario, but now we have board members from, from Nova Scotia to BC, which is a great way to spread the Canadian Baseball Hall of Fame across the country. Our, our newest board member from BC has a great connection with Little League Canada, and we are going to host the Canadian Champions in St. Mary's on August 13th. They finished their tournament August 12th. They're flying here to, uh, to Toronto. Then they're gonna bus here for breakfast, and then they're gonna bus back to Toronto, and they're gonna fly out to Williamsport, Pennsylvania for the World Championship uh, starting a couple days after that. Uh, any chance that, that uh, St. Mary's will become like Williamsport? 
for the Canadian Championship? What do you think? Oh, well, um, I surely hope so. I, I mean, the, the one big thing is, of course, accommodations in St. Mary's. We all know that's struggling right now. Um, you know, that's the one thing they really look at. I think, you know, we had the ball facilities. Obviously, we have four amazing ball fields uh, right at the Hall of Fame. So it, it could happen, but I think they're, it's in Calgary this year. So they're obviously in a big central city where there's tons of amenities and accommodations and whatnot. So they tend to like the bigger cities. But we're still pretty darn good, so they could come here. Okay. You, you're pitching really well, by the way. Uh, Thank you. Let's, right. see, let's see how good he is at. Scott, are you okay? Because he's been throwing some fire. Come on. Uh, I'm a little worried. We don't have any security on board. <laughs> okay. Okay, there we go. No fouls. I, I need my signals. you got to let him throw. I need my signals. Okay. He's throwing, not you. I don't trust you. Oh, I'm going to brush him back. This one might be high and inside, but ah, hit, I'll go low. Oh, <laughs> look at her go! There we go. Okay, Scott, what are your plans for the future for the hall? Yeah, I mean, we're we're into hosting events. We just had our first uh, Canadian Championship uh, Hall of Fame event this year. Yeah, I mean, we're we're into hosting events. We just held uh, two t tournaments this this past weekend. We had teams from all the way from Ottawa and Barrie and whatnot. So we're really into hosting events back again. Uh, next weekend we got two more tournaments. In August we got another tournament. And these Teams are coming from all over the province to St. Mary's, so it's really helping the other stores and businesses in town. And, and we're just looking to, a, a, you know, create more events. We've been closed basically for two years, so we're sort of revamping our, our library, research center, our event space, and uh, getting people back to St. Mary's. Okay, well, Scott, as always, great to have you sh have you on the show, and I'm going to give you back your ball, okay? okay. Take me out to the ball. I'm on his hand. Me out with the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and crack the jacks. I don't care if I ever go back for this road. Tut tut for the home team. It ain't a win, it's a shame. For it's one, two, three strikes, you're out at the old. Crawford, Canadian Baseball Hall of Fame, right here, the only one in Canada. Come and see it, baby. Perfect. Now, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, a performer who's never been on the show before, has moved into St. Mary's, and uh, a, definitely a welcome addition to the musical family that we have here, there's no doubt about it. I only met Jesse a couple of uh, times. Uh, Jesse, welcome to the show. Well, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. How about I say that for Jesse Weber, ladies and gentlemen? Now, did I say that right, Weber or Weaver? No, no, uh, Weber is correct, uh, English Anglican. Weaver is Dutch Mennonite, so I'm oh, okay. Right? All right, so Jesse's going to do uh, his first song uh, of the, uh, uh, well, the evening, I guess, is late afternoon, early evening, and I'll do a little interview with him after. So, ladies thank and gentlemen, you. nice big St. Mary's welcome for St. Mary's musician. Uh, singer songwriter Jesse Weber. Thank you so much. You got a little more guitar there, brother. Thank you. That sounded nice. So my name is Jesse, as the, as he said. I'm, I recently moved here, and uh, I'm going to play a song now. Uh, a little backstory on it. I uh, I had this band with with two other. Well, there was 14 of us total, but the the core songwriters were myself, another fellow named. Ryan Broman and another guy named Craig McNair. Uh, we were called Lo-Fi Mind. We did a lot of uh, kind of throwback music, but it was it was original stuff. So Lo-Fi is like low fidelity. Anyways, we had this uh, we had this band, and uh, we were reminiscing one night over a couple of uh, call it pops, and we had uh, <clears throat> we said none, we realized none of us had ever seen our hero Paul McCartney play, and um, this so so we said, well, wouldn't it be kind of cool if if we all collectively wrote a song about going to see Paul McCartney, and then and then Ryan said, "Well, I have one. I'll do you one better. Why don't we write it like a Paul McCartney song?" And so I said, "Hey, that's cool." And I had this riff, and I, I started playing it. And so we came up with this intro, outro, and the and middle section, kind of like a a band on the run sort of thing. And uh, we ended up calling it "Hey Paul." And um, yeah, so I'm gonna play that. 
But before I do, I just want to, uh, I've, been, I've been bugging my neighbor, Paul, who's sitting over there. I've been bugging him about, I, I gotta show you this tune, man. I got a song called Hey Paul, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw this one out to my, my neighbor, Paul, too. All right, here goes.
you so much. It's a lot of fun playing that. Okay, Jesse, I'm going to play a little game with you. This is our interview. Let's do it. Are you ready? I am ready. I'm Paul McCartney. You're John Lennon. Hello, Paul. How are okay, you? Hey, hello, John. How are you? I'm not so bad. Okay, I've got a new song I want you to hear just for now, just because... You're uh, light on me, Paul. Uh, okay, let me just... Speed do, it up, Paul. Speed it up. Uh, let me just do this song for you uh, real quickly here. When I find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. That's my song. Uh, do you have a song that you want to show me? I've got a couple songs. That you wrote? That I wrote myself, myself. But, but, okay. Back in Liverpool. Uh, well, let me hear you. Uh, sing one song, please. Close your eyes and I'll kiss you. Listen there now, John. John, that's not bad. That's, yeah, not, that's bad not bad at all, is it? Oh, I, I have one more song that I, I want you to hear. It's a slow song, okay? I think it might be a hit song. Um, yesterday. All oh, my trouble seems so far away. Pretty good, huh? That's not bad. I think you're onto something. I need a place to hide away. I believe in. I gotta work on it. Yesterday, yeah, one more. I believe it started out of scrambled eggs, didn't it? Well, how did you know that, Paul? <laughs> John. Okay, one more, John. One more, one more. Uh, and they're going to kick us out of here. By the way, how do people get a hold of you, uh, Jesse? Uh, yeah. So I, I www.jessewebermusic.com. You can uh, you can find me there. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and all that. Uh, I've got a gig. Is it cool to t say where I've got a gig right. around here coming up? Is that Absolutely. okay? Um, uh, I'm playing at the golf course on July 21st. So come out and uh, right. call Yeah, I've got a gig. You got I've a got gig? a gig, Paul. Okay. Want another Beatles song or do you want to? You want your song? Oh, one of my songs? Okay. So this, uh, this song, I, uh, when during the, the pandemic, I was uh, locked up in. Right. <laughs> Just I, would, kidding, I was locked up for. Well, we were all locked up, and I kind of felt like it was getting to the best of me. And I wanted to write a song about optimism and, and hope, and and uh, it just made me feel good to sit out in the backyard and write something. So, um, anyway, so I, I it took me about. It was the first time I ever did a uh, my own. Uh, I wrote, produced, uh, recorded, engineered. I did. I did the whole thing front to back and released it. And it's called Brand New Day. Um, first time I ever did that on my own. Um, and then I, I went to release it a year to the day later. On la It was last June 20th. And it was the day we found out all the horror stories of the indigenous kids. So I, I didn't feel okay releasing it and not at least sharing some of the, the proceeds. So since then I've been um, splitting the proceeds with that with the Six Nations Food Bank of, of Canada. Um, and uh, and recently I've been added to the U our Ukrainian uh, relief fund as well with this song. So, anyways, it's it's kind of an uplifting song, and then I've been splitting proceeds with it. I, I've been, you know, if you want if you want to check it out, it's on Bandcamp. So it's jessieweber.bandcamp.com, and you can pay what you want for it, and I always split the money for it. So, Beautiful. right. So Beautiful. it's called Brand New Day. Feel trapped, but I know it won't last. Got to get outside and dream of who's away. I wanna go to a place no one knows. Tell myself it's gonna be okay. What can I do for you if you haven't got a clue? 
such a welcome addition to this part of the uh, planet uh, it's fantastic so we're gonna uh, are we closing off now John no. yeah we're closing off now and uh, oh. a couple of people to thank uh, first I'd like to thank the town of St. Mary's they help us with the sound equipment and we're still using the iPad that Rotary gave us a few years ago so that's really great and but most of all I'd like to thank you for showing up for this wonderful show let's hear it for the crowd that's all you think of yourself come on it has to be louder <laughs> okay. Take us home, Frank. It's in G if you want to hang okay. along. All right. I was born in Ontario. Place to stay in a place to grow. From Pickle Lake to Point Pelet, no place I'd rather be. My hometown they call Stone Town, prettiest town for miles around. Well, in a false life, people share smiles, treat you like family. You know it? Go home, same and Mary, same. Same Mary, same Mary, home to me. I want to say 
hi to Dan Welcher and Linda. Yeah. 